Hi guys, welcome to my video on hybrid species. I was going to do another video on um, calico cats first, but I saw that a lot of you are struggling with this specific question in the group. Um, it is part of Tut 6 question 3, and it's got to do with this weird plant from the genus Triticum. So, as always, the question is in the comments, and you can give it a read, and um, and then we'll we'll start with it. But before we do that, I actually just want to explain how bivalents come into play with this, and how kind of polyploid species work. So, what they do with hybrid species is that there's always two species that they kind of mush together to form this like hybrid. But sometimes the chromosome numbers are odd, or sometimes they have um, uh, multiple sets of genomes. Sometimes it's multiples of their own genome, so they could be like three N of their own genomes, or they could have two different types of genomes, like one from the one species and one from the other. And that is what is technically occurring in this partic particular question that we're doing. So. In this question, they, they talk a lot about bivalence and univalence. And if you don't know what a bivalent is, it's two chromosomes, one from one species and one from the other, that pair up and form a homologous pair. And that happens, you know, during meiosis so that they can cross over in, uh, in meiosis one and then, you know, hand over um, the nice genes that they have and do all that crossing over magic. It's all great fun. Um, I have looked at the memo for this question, and it is absolutely atrocious. And anybody that understands this question from that memo, well, I actually, like, take my hat off to you, because I don't even know how to do it that way. So, I'm going to show you my way. Okay, so just to deal with um, bivalence and everything before we get started. So you usually have one species, and you have another species, alright? And this species is going to be pink, and it's going to have six different chromosomes, like that. And then this species is going to be green, and it's going to have four different chromosomes, right? So when they undergo meiosis, they're going to form their gametes. And from the species two, there's obviously going to be half the number of chromosomes because it was initially, um, it's 2n was equal to 4, but now is in its haploid, haploid form and it has 2. And in species 1, this one's going to have 3 chromosomes. So where it was 2n equals 6, it has now become n equals 3. So now if these two species 1 and species 2 were to mate, this is what their um, cell, or well, the cell would look like during uh, during meiosis. Oh sorry, yeah, during meiosis? Yeah, and if they had to kind of pair up and 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 form, form a gamete. Oh also if they were in the process of forming a gamete. So here is its cell if it had to, if it in its natural state. So here are all the chromosomes lined up for species 1. Because remember in meiosis, chromo chromosomes come together on, uh, to, onto a metaphase plate so that they can form homologous chromosomes so that they can cross over during meiosis and exchange genetic material, right? So I'm just going to draw the metaphase plate like that. So that's the chromosomes for species 1 lined up all nicely and this is the chromosome from species 2 also lined up so for example these two chromosomes are very similar so that's why they lined up and formed a homologous pair which is also called a bivalent right and these two chromosomes were able to pair up as well and also form a bivalent so we have two bivalents But because species 1 had more chromosomes to start off with, it, it forms, uh, because, and because species 2 doesn't have enough chromosomes, um, as, well, as much as species 1, that there was a leftover chromosome 
of species one in the new hybrid species. So that's why it's one univalent. Oh, sorry, I messed, messed up I. So that's technically what's happening in this question as well. It's that two species with unequal chromosome numbers are forming, um, like forming a cell or being fertilized and then some are pairing up but others are not because they don't have a, a, a match with the other species. All right, so just uh, don't think there's anything else I want to I want to say about that, but we can move on. Okay, so everything's playing all right. I just always have to check my video because oh my gosh, sometimes it stops and then I start over and then I just want to pull out my hair. Anyways, so in the question, I hope you guys can pause now and, and give, a, give it a read and then we can restart. Okay, hopefully you've done that. So what they kind of want to want to do is they've given you crosses of these like really weirdly named species and they've told you how many bivalence and univalence the hybrids have but they haven't told you the somatic number which is their um, diploid numbers for each of the species involved in the crosses. So that's what we have to kind of work towards getting to I guess. Um, they've also told you like let's take the first cross for example. They say it's T. turdigum with T. monococcum. I'm going to call them TT and TM for the remainder of this of this question. But they say that there's seven bivalence and seven univalence. So I don't want to deal with like a million lines on my page. So I'm going to divide everything by seven. So instead of saying seven bivalence, I'm going to have one bivalence, bivalent and one univalent. So it just makes things a whole lot easier for me and it will make a lot more sense to you as we go on and I've done that for all of the crosses it's just so I don't have to like instead of like it's for example instead of drawing out six lines I'm only drawing out one so even though I say that there are there's one bivalent that means that it's a pair so there's two chromosomes in a bivalent all right so I've done that those that's exactly the same as what they've written down in the question I've just divided everything by seven so I'm just going to say divided by seven, put that in a bubble so that you know what I'm doing. Um, sorry, yeah, and I just made a mistake. I said two originally, but it's actually one. So yeah, just bear with me there. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to put everything in their bubbles. So for cross one, I'm going to have a bubble. Cross two will have its own bubble. And then cross three, I hope that fits, will also have its own bubble. Right, so for example, I'm going to give the, all these different um, species their own colors. So when, when I write down their chromosomes, all these chromosomes will have different colors and we'll be able to know what's all cracking on here. So TT will be my pink color, TM will be my green. And TA will be my orange. Just makes life a lot easier to see. So what I like to do is I like to write out where I see all the bivalence are because you have to, so what I did here is that I saw that there's one chromosome that was unpaired. So we have to decide, we or we have to like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We have to determine which of these species are forming bivalence and which ones have leftover chromosomes and you know that's how we're going to figure out how, what their somatic um, cell numbers are. So if we start out we see that TT and TM share one chromosome each. They form one bivalent so that means half of the bivalent comes from TT and half of the bivalent comes from TM. So there's my one from TT and here's my one from TM. Right, so I can't really determine where this univalent comes from yet. But let's do the same for this next one. So for TA, we know that one comes from TA. And then we know that one comes from TM. But we can't determine what's going on with our univalent yet either. 
And then in the last one, we have two bivalents and one, and then we got from that from that species. TT also shares a chromosome in that bivalent. So those are all my bivalent set. But now we just have to determine where do these univalents in which which species do these univalents come from. So I'm not going to look at this cross for a moment. I'm going to look at these two because both of these cross C2 and C3 both share TA. So now I look here and I'm like thinking, okay, TA is crossed with TT. There's two uni uh, sorry, there's two bivalents formed and one univalent formed. But when the same TA is crossed with TM, only one univalent, oh, sorry, one bivalent is formed and two univalents are left over. So if you can kind of deduce from that, that TA has to have three chromosomes because in the first one, TA paired twice with TT, but TA only paired once with TM and left two um, univalents left over. So now I can put another one there and two there. So if I can write this down, I'm going to say TA is my species three. I'm also going to say TT is my species one and TM is my species two. I'm just going to put it up at the top so I know which one's with which. So that's also my species two because I know green is green is species two and then as pink is species one. You can number them any way you want, that's just the way I wrote it out. I knew TT came first, so that's why I made it uh, um, species one and TM came second and that's why I made it species two, so on and so forth. So like I was saying, so now we figured out that in cross two, the univalence came from TA and that's why there's two left over. There's two unpaired chromosomes. So one bivalent, like it says there, and two leftover univalents. And if we go to cross three, there are two bivalents. There's a bivalent and there's a bivalent and one univalent left over. And then if I just go to my first one, okay, so that's really easy. You just know that There, that TM has the least number of um, chromosomes, like we saw there, and TT has two. So that's why it's like that. So in the first one, we know that a bivalent is forming between the two species, and one chromosome is left over, and it has to be left over by species one. All right, so now that we've written all that out, we've drawn our bubbles, and now we can work out our somatic number. All right, so the way we do that is that we know that for each species, I'm just going to write down species one, species two, and species three. We know that somatic number is our diploid number, just by the way, because somatic means the, the number of chromosomes in the normal cells. So for species one, that Remember, we divided everything by seven, so we mustn't get confused with that. That if there's a bivalent, it means that half of the chromosomes come from TT, right? Oh, and this is a very important thing that I actually, I actually have to tell you guys, is that in this question, they also want to know the symbols, their genome symbols. So it, where I wrote the species at the top, you have to write the symbols on the side going like that way. So if the first gene or the genome is A, then the second one will be B, right? And like this one, the first will have the chromosomes for gene A, the second ones will have the chromosome for gene B, and the last ones will have the chromosomes for gene C. Same for the last one, A, B, and C. So like for... Um, for species 2, it will only have chromosomes for A, so species 2 will be A, A. Then species, um, sorry, let me say species 1 has A and B, so it will be A, A, B, B. 
And then species three will have A, A, B, B, and C, C. And remember all of these, the species two is diploid, so it's actually quite normal, but the rest of them are polyploids because they have multiples of uh, genomes, not only of their own, but of others as well. All right, and working out the somatic number, we know that TM, which is species two, has seven. We know that species one, which is TT, has 14. And we know that species three has 21. And to explain how that works is that if we look here, each of these chromosomes equal seven. So if we look at species three, it has one, two, three chromosomes, three times seven equals 21. If we look at species two, species two only has one chromosome, so that's why it's seven, and species one has two chromosomes, and that's why it's 14. So I hope that like kind of makes sense to everyone. Um, there was one other thing I wanted to tell, tell you guys. Let me think about it. <laughs> Sorry, making the video longer than I have to, but I don't want to forget. So just to explain, I think I feel like I want to go more in depth as like how to work out these somatic numbers. Is that at the beginning, we had, um, let's take TA for example. TA we knew shared bivalence with, um, with TT, which was my pink, right? So it's this one. So... At the beginning, we knew that there were 14 bivalents, which means that there's, if we double 14, because if there's 14 bivalents, they're a pair. So if we double it, it equals 28. But we need to half that number, which means that it's 14, right? But then there's still univalent left over. This is the univalent from species 3, which is TA. So we still have to plus 7, because remember, we divided everything by 7. So we plus 7, which gives you 21. If I do the same thing for, let's go with TT. TT, which was my pink, still formed a bivalent with um, species 2. So technically we have one bivalent, which actually equals 14, right? But we divide that bivalent by 2 because half that bivalent number comes from the one species and one and the other half comes from the other species which means that we only have seven but because we have a leftover univalent there's still another seven chromosomes left over remember you have to work with the real numbers not the numbers i'm using here because i divided everything by seven which equals 14 and then let me just do the last one just for the fun of it the last one only just in all the cases that it's been with, when it's been crossed with another um, another species, it's only formed one bivalent, meaning that there was 14 in the bivalents, but because you divide it by two, there's only seven left over. And that's how you actually do the maths to know wh what the somatic numbers are. So I hope that's helpful and you guys learned a thing or two. Um, let me know if that was not explanatory. Just remember that these all come together on the metaphase plate when they're crossing over. This is after fertilization and they're, they're going to form gametes. So just remember that. Um, and yeah, that's a nice, very nice way to visualize this question and what they're asking. I think there was actually a B part of the question, but I'm not going to do it because I think you guys can work it out yourself. It's just asking if um, they're autopolyploid or allopolyploid. So that's just a bit of um, theory that you have to go through by yourself, but it's fairly easy. Just to let you know, this one is diploid and those ones are polyploid. Just a little hint. But yeah, thanks for watching again and um, yeah, have a nice evening.